Everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another VB.net 2013 tutorial. And this is a brand new series. This series, we're going to focus on what's known as GUI-based programming. We're going to take a break away from console programming, leave that behind us, and move into GUI programs. If you've never heard the term GUI before, it's actually spelled G-U-I, and it stands for Graphical User Interface. So the idea is we're moving on to Windows Forms, so buttons and text boxes and pictures and labels and all that kind of stuff thrown into the mix. The one thing you need to know as a programmer is that when you move from a console program to a GUI programming, we had all the power when it came to consoles. So programmers had the power. We could tell the user when we wanted input. We could display whatever the heck we wanted when we wanted. We could pause the program, things like that. But now we relinquish all of that control and power and we give that to the user. So let go of it and give out to the people. Okay, and empower your users. And basically, what I'm going to do in this video is take you through some of the basic concepts behind the GUI programs. I'll show you some of the new windows we're going to receive, adding some controls and changing them, and then I'm going to leave it up to you from then. In the next video, we're going to look at some of the standards, building ourselves some really basic GUI programs, and doing some very, very early entry GUI programming. The one thing I want you to think about, if you've watched all of my videos or you've done console programming in the past, don't forget it. Okay, Keep all of that stuff with you. We're still going to use variables and arrays and if statements and loops and classes and things like that. They still apply. It's just no longer we have a console for our program. We now have a GUI. Okay, and Let's get right into this one. We're going to make a new GUI based project. We're just going to click on our old link, new project. And we're going to select Windows Form Application. I'm not going to name it because I'm going to throw this one away. Click OK. And this time you'll see once it's created the project, we're going to get a brand new type of screen from Visual Studio. And here we are. This is the brand new one. So the main thing is obviously this is we start with one form in a Windows Form Application. You can add and change this as much as you want. And there's still our code side of things, okay? And I'll show you that just in a moment. So basically, right here is known as the design. Okay, we have the form, we can change the form and any other controls that are added to that. Okay, but as you see on the right, we've still got the Solution Explorer and we've still got the Properties Bar. Okay, everything is still the same, it's just we've got this design thing now. The one thing I would like to focus on, <coughs> excuse me, is the toolbox. Okay, that's where all of our controls are going to come from. Now, before I go into that, I brought up before we still have code. Okay, and we can access that a number of ways. Okay, the easiest way is probably right clicking and clicking on View Code. It'll open up a new tab up the top, and there's our code. Okay, so nothing has gone, there's still code, but we have all of this design, this form on top of our code now. So let's look at this toolbox now, okay? This is where all of your controls will come from, okay? So you've got buttons and checkboxes and text boxes down the bottom, you've got labels, you've got pictures, you've got heaps of different stuff. Most of these are just ones that the user can interact with straight away. So we can actually add buttons and checkboxes and they'll just work like a regular button or work like a regular checkbox. They can click on them, they can tick the box, they can untick the box. Okay, it's got a label on it. A lot of the things that come from this toolbox already behave the way you'd expect them. They just have no code that's associated with them. Okay, and We'll worry about adding code to them at least in the next video when I start talking about that kind of stuff. Now there's three ways that you can add these controls to your form. The first way, you can simply single click, okay, and then click on your form. Whoop, I've drawn it over the side, whoops. And there you go, there's a button. Okay, the second way you can do it is you can double click and it adds the button to your form. The third way that you can do this, okay, the third and final way, is you can click on the button, click and drag, and draw any size button that you'd prefer. So as you may have noticed when I was adding those buttons, I had a little bit of trouble with the toolbox sort of overlapping the form and annoying the hell out of me. What I always do is I always move this toolbox from its default location. I prefer it, personally, to be over here with the Solution Explorer. So what I do is you simply click and drag the toolbox up the top, move it over here, 
and let go. Personally, it's out of the way, it's easy to access, okay, and I can switch just between the Solution Explorer and the Toolbox quite easily, okay, and that's my preference. You might have a different preference, but that's mine particularly. So let's have a look at another couple of controls quickly. So some other common ones is a label, okay, you can always use this search bar to search for different controls that you'd like, okay, I like to double click to add things to forms, okay, and another common one is the text box you're going to use a lot okay and there we go so right now everything you see here is going to be what our program looks like when we start it up so if I hit the play button now you'll see it's ugly oh well there's my form okay and the buttons act exactly how you expect them to I can click on them they give a sort of feedback when you click on them no code happens because there is no code associated with those buttons text boxes work like you'd expect a text box to work. Okay, you can type in it, you can array stuff. It's just a regular text box, and a label is just something. It's just text. Can't interact with it by default. And that's pretty much what a Windows Form application is. Okay, you can still have modules of code and classes and things like that, but for right now, this is all you get. Let's have a quick look at properties. Okay, down here we've always had this properties panel, but I've never really looked at it and I've never really paid it much attention. Okay, but what you have selected shows a number of properties or I suppose attributes if you want to call it that. And depending on what you have selected, let's say if I click on the form, it shows the properties of what you have selected. Okay, it tells me right here I've got form one selected, which is a form, and there's all the properties of that form. Now there's a couple of ways you can select things. You can either do what I did before and simply click on an object and then have a look at the properties or you can click this drop down bar and select straight through there sometimes this is handy sometimes if you've got a lot of controls then it gets a little bit cluttered in that drop down okay but it can help now let's have a focus on changing some of these properties let's try the form to start with these properties can change the way it looks how it behaves and even more okay Let's have a look at some pretty common ones. So there's a back color that we can change, and if you change that, it simply changes the background color of your form. Okay? We've also got different stuff. We can change the font, the for color, and all this kind of stuff. The one that I'm looking for is text, okay, which changes the caption that sits on top of this bar. So I can go, hello forms, and you'll see right up there it says hello forms. Okay. And there's lots and lots of properties, and I would really recommend you try heaps of different ones. And we can do the same thing with our buttons and our text boxes and things like that. Okay, we've got back colors, and we can change it to something stupid. Uh, and we can change the text. Like that. Okay, and you can do that to heaps of different stuff. Now, as you've been seeing before, I've been dragging these around, and I've been resizing them, and I haven't really explained that into a little bit of depth. And I will quickly now, because I'd like to explain that and then move on to something interesting about the text box. With this button here, you'll see all of our nine anchors. We can click and resize and do whatever the heck we like. And you'll also notice that when I move it, when I, when I resize it, I get these blue and purple bars. Now, what these are is trying to be like a measurement. It's a, an anchor point. Okay, That purple bar is lining up those two pieces of text. The blue bar is lining up the top of the buttons. Okay, and so forth. And I can move it across and down, and you get different types of snaps to different objects. Okay, that can be really handy trying to align all your different objects together. The one thing to note, if I click on the label, for instance, there is no resizing there. That's because by default, a label is the same size as text, and we'll worry about that later. The text box allows you to go left and right. The height is controlled by the height of your font. Okay, and we can actually change that just under the font property, you click on the triple button and when it comes up finally, there's your size property. So we can click on that size and you see it change the height. Okay, and we'll talk about what that little arrow is later on. Okay, let's hit start and you'll notice nothing's changed, they still behave the same way, they look a bit different. Okay, now I didn't really explain a whole lot in this video, and that's because I didn't really want to. What I want you to do from now on is just stop watching these videos for about five to ten minutes, go through that toolbox, 
and try out as many different controls as you can. Try your radio buttons and your check boxes and your list views and your list boxes and things like that. Get to know the majority of your controls before you go to the next video because I would like you to know what's available to you when you start doing your programs. Okay, for the moment, this is me signing off. In the next video, we're going to look at some really basic introductions and standards to GUI programming. So thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next video.